Rapid Bus, uh, senior number right, we see Rapid Bus Private Limited. Basically, what it does, it operates close to 2,000 buses in Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital city of Malaysia, in Penang, uh, in Kuantan, and soon in Kota Baru, which is one of the other major cities in Malaysia. Prasarana Integrated Development uh, Private Limited, which is Pride. In short, basically, what it does. Uh, it embarks into a transit-oriented development project whereby we follow what Hong Kong has done. Uh, we have quite a number of parcels of land throughout our, our rail network, what we have done. We partner uh, reputable developers where we create property developments at various locations. And on top of that, we are going big also in retail. So this is one of the things what this particular subsidiary does. Number four, Prasara Integrated Management Engineering Services. We have close to 20 years of experience in public transport, rail and bus. So it will be such a waste if we do not put it in, in, in full use. So what we have done, we've created this particular business unit for us to share uh, our experience and knowledge uh, to other parts of the world. Basically, we have five uh, major rail networks in Kuala Lumpur, KL Central. You can see there's one small photo up there. Basically, that is the real transport hub back in Kuala Lumpur. These are five uh, rail lines in Kuala Lumpur. KTMB, uh, the suburban rail, which is about 157 kilometers with 50 stations. Klana Jai LRT, 29 kilometers. Ampang LRT, 27 kilometers in length. KL Monorail, 8.6 kilometers. Basically, KL Monorail, it passes through the central district of Kuala Lumpur. So we operate Kalana Jaya LRT, Ampang LRT, and KL Monorail. KTMB commuter, it is being operated by another entity. Last but not least, uh, KLIA Express or ERL, um, 57 kilometers, which is operated by, an, again, another entity. These are the three main lines. Kalana Jai LRT, it's fully automated driverless system. We're using Bombardier vehicles, uh, about 4.5 kilometers of tunnel. Started operations way back in 1998, which was in time for our Commonwealth Games. Ampang LRT started in 1997. Uh, it's driver operated. It covers two lines, Ampang and also towards National Sports Center in Bukit Jalil. Last but not least, KL Monorail, which is mostly elevated. Um, start operations way back in 2003. Uh, bear in mind, all these three lines, when they first started, it started by a different, different operator. They were not integrated at all. It was very, very challenging. Yeah? So, if you can see, from 1997 until today, uh, it's very phenomenal when it comes to ridership. Started about 47,000 for each line. Now, overall, daily ridership has reached 430,000 uh, uh, riders. Uh, so, so once the MRT comes to the picture uh, in four years' time, and also the two LRT lines being extended, we could foresee it will reach close to 800,000 riders a day. So these are some of the initiatives which have been implemented. Uh, we have uh, 35 sets of new four-car trains. Uh, we started about a year and a half ago. We have actually put in a new AFC system to integrate all the three ticketing system for all the three lines, which I've just mentioned. Uh, we have upgraded all our stations uh, to be um, disabled friendly, covered walkways. As I said, uh, we are now quite busy in extending the two lines, Ampang Line and Kalanaja Line, another 34 kilometers. Uh, we have uh, purchased 12 sets of new four-car train for the monorail line. It's coming in, inshallah, by, by mid of this year. Uh, and we have added a quite a number of other facilities like multi-story car parks and whatnot. So what it was before for Kalanya Jaya Line, uh, it was about 3.1 minutes away with a two-car train, so 30 cars. Uh, now we have managed to achieve 2.4 minutes away uh, during peak hours with uh, 16 two-cars and 24 four-cars. You can see uh, the congestion before and after uh, from the uh, photos on the slides. On the AFC, the ticketing system, 
uh, we had a lot of leakages. I would say it's between three and five percent, but now we have reduced it to about one percent uh, after we have actually put in the new EFC system. Uh, I think we work with Indra on this for the new EFC system. Well, these are the two lines, Kalanjaya and, and uh, uh, Ampang line. So as I said, uh, we, have, we are now about 25% uh, progress. We are standing 17 kilometers from this area, which is Sri Ptaling, this is the last station, Ampang line, towards Putra Heights, 17 kilometers. And the Kalana Jaya line, another 17 kilometers from Kalana Jaya station to Putra Heights. So Putra Heights basically will be the main station which the two lines meet. So with the line extension, we're going to have more than half a million uh, population. If you could see from the slides, we have a new station design uh, and also um, a much better uh, movement for people for all uh, stations that we have planned. So if you notice from this particular slide, um, we target the line extension to be limited by, by 2015, uh, third quarter. If you notice, uh, we have park and ride, but one thing which I need to, to highlight here, station number two, number three, and number 13, as I said, we have actually partnered with reputable developers. Uh, what we have done basically, uh, we have actually agreed on certain percentage out of the gross de development value for us to build malls, condominiums, just to have a create a transit-oriented uh, development. Because when we first started more than 15 years ago, uh, we never thought of this. We thought of just have two, three rail alignments, put stations in, and that's it. So I think we've learned from what Singapore has done, what London has done, what Hong Kong has gone through. It's amazing, it's phenomenal. So that we are going into that. Again, this is another line, Ampang line extension. We have three transit oriented development. These are some of the photos of the progress of the uh, line extension work, which we are currently undertaking. Uh, it, it's very challenging. Uh, this is basically the Kalana Jaya line, and it's all elevated. Construction works uh, pass through major highways. Uh, some of the streets or roads need to be closed at certain hours just to ensure that safety uh, is, is, is in order. These are some of other photos. Some artist impression on the uh, stations. These are some of the key challenges which I would love to share with all the participants today. Uh, when it comes to design management, uh, there were a lot of drawing changes uh, throughout the uh, construction. Uh, interfaces between facilities, system, third parties, uh, very, very long and tedious land acquisition process. It, it was just uh, amazing. Uh, years after years, uh, issues were still there and the issues are still there as far as the land acquisition process is concerned. Uh, again, to get the local authority's approval to get development order is again another major challenge. Uh, in terms of contract management, we have about 40 contract packages. Uh, Calling tender while design, uh, still in progress. Uh, again, long approval process to finalize the successful bidder. This is some of the things which, which I'm very open and candid, uh, what we've gone through. Uh, some of these challenges we are also facing with our MRT uh, project, which we are currently undertaking. Yeah? When it comes to planning, it's not easy. Though it's not uh, that many, 40 contract packages, but, but again, to ensure design and whatnot um, was not that easy. Some other challenges in terms of construction. Uh, one of the things I need to highlight as far as construction is concerned, uh, one of the new stations will be integrated with the KTMB or the rail commuter station. So for the last few months we have had a discussion with, with the Ministry of Transport as well as KTM 
on how to actually integrate these two stations. So finally, this is the thing. Uh, the project has been reached to an extent whereby it may have a delay for about six months or so. Reason very simple. What we wanted, we told KTM to actually close that particular station in order for us to actually undertake this job very fast. But after a few rounds of discussion, we realized that there were a lot of issues on the ground by the public. They didn't allow us to actually close down the stations. So this is one of the major things which is currently happening uh, as far as the construction is concerned. So what we decided, there are two platforms, we just closed one platform, platform but the only thing is um, there will be a delay, so the headway will be bigger. So for Kalana Jaya line, uh, that not so much of major issues, but for Ampang line, uh, we're going to replace our current signaling system to CBTC. I know this is part of the agenda today. Uh, I think some of the colleagues is going to discuss and share with us their challenges on how they replace from the old system to the new CBTC signaling system. That's one of the major issues that we are facing currently when it comes to the Ampang line extension project. These are some of the technical uh, features on the signaling system, uh, the design headway, operating headway, yeah, but most of the platform basically island and side. Uh, so we have about 12 and 11 stations respectively for the two extension line. So besides LRT extension, as I briefly mentioned, we have ordered 12 sets of four car trains for monorail. So it's going to be delivered uh, by end of this year. We also have undertaken uh, uh, upgrading works at all our monorail stations because the current stations only allow for a two car trains to stop. So what will happen? We have upgraded all the stations we have to accommodate the four car trains. And on top of that, we, uh, we have actually built multi-story car park with 1,200 bays, uh, another three coming up in Nampang and also in our Ambassador Street Pataling. This is in Nampang. With the new AFC, we have managed to integrate all the three lines uh, ticketing system together. Meaning to say, previously, if you take from one line to another line, you have to actually get out from the pit area to non-pit, purchase another ticket, go into another line, purchase another ticket, and goes out. So what we have done under this new AFC system, it's seamless journey. This is one of the transit-oriented development projects um, at Ara Damansara with a gross development develop value of about, let's say about 400 uh, million US dollars. This is another one. You can see our station here. Basically, this is our land. So what we have done, we partner with one of the uh, developers to build a few units of condos and also shopping malls. So when it comes to MRT, uh, we have started uh, working very closely with MRT Corporation, which is another entity under the Ministry of Finance, um, to develop the first MRT line, uh, which is uh, Sungai Bulo Kajang. So under the study, basically, there are going to be three lines. So the first line is Sungai Bulo Kajang, which is the green line. Yeah. Uh, so the other two lines, the red and the circle, it's still under technical feasibility studies. So hopefully by mid of this year, due announcement will be made. And hopefully by end of the year, all the tendering process, a bidding process will start for the next two MRT lines. So this is the first line of the MRT from Sungai Bulo to Kajang, uh, which will serve about 1.2 million uh, population, uh, 51 kilometers in length, 41.5 kilometers elevated and 9.5 uh, kilometers underground with 36 stations uh, of which 28 fully elevated and 8 underground stations. So there are a few stations uh, which are going to be integrated with the current existing rail lines i.e. in Sungai Bulo uh, with the Kalana Jaya line at Pasasani and Ampang line at Maluri station and another KTM station in Kajang. 
These are some of the construction works uh, which are ongoing uh, for this particular MRT line, 51 kilometers from Singapore to Kajang. So hopefully the target revenue service date will be in January 2017. This is basically the depot. Yeah. The piling is now in progress in some of the areas. This is the Smantan portal. This is where uh, the first entry point to the tunnel which is going to take place. Uh, this is another photo, aerial view of construction work going on next to a highway. Some uh, photos which I'm sharing with all of you. So basically by, by 2020, this is what the Land Public Transport Commission um, is currently uh, doing. They have come up with the uh, master plan for the rail network uh, for Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia in particular. So we're looking at Kalanajaya Line, Ampang Line, Monorail Line, the current KTMB Line, ERL, MRT Line 1, which is currently in progress, MRT Line 2, uh, MRT Line 3, there'll be a monorail extension on top of the current one, the Putrajaya monorail. Basically, Putrajaya is the administrative center for the government, and there'll be a freight relief line. So a lot of happenings as far as Kuala Lumpur is concerned for the next uh, few years or so. Thank you. Gracias.